Chapter Twelve of Iracema, The Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twelve. The day darkened. Night was already coming on. The pajé returned to the wigwam, and again poising the slab of stone, closed with it the mouth of the subterranean passage. Calbi also arrived from the great taba, where he and his brother braves had retired after beating the forest in search of the Pichiguara enemy. In the center of the wigwam, amidst the hammocks, slung and squared, Iracema spread the mat of Carnauba palm, and served the remains of the game with the wines made during the last moon. The Tabajara brave alone relished the supper. The gall which is wrung from the heart by sorrow did not embitter his palate. The pajé drew from his calumet the sacred smoke of Tupin, which filled the depths of his lungs. The stranger greedily inhaled the fresh air to cool his boiling blood. The maiden seemed to sigh her soul away, like honey dropping from the calm in the frequent sobs that burst from her trembling lips. Calbi soon retired to the great taba. The pajé still inhaled the smoke which prepared him for the mysteries of the sacred rite. There arises in the night silence a vibrating cry which ascends to the sky. Martin raises up his head and listens. Again a similar sound is heard. The warrior whispers, so that only the maiden could hear him. Hast heard Iracema the seagull's cry? Iracema has heard the cry of a bird which she does not know. It is the Achiachi, the heron of the sea, and Iracema is the mountain maid who has never trotted upon the white beach upon which the waves break. The beach belongs to the Pichiguaras, the lords of the palm groves. The warriors of the great tribe who inhabited the seaboards call themselves Pichiguaras, lords of the valleys. But the Tabajaras, their enemies, contemptuously term them Pochiwaras, or shrimp eaters. Iracema did not wish to offend the white warrior, and therefore, when speaking of the Pichiguaras, she gave them the warlike name which they had chosen for themselves. The stranger reflected, and retained for a moment, on the lip of prudence, the word which he was about to utter. The seagull's song is the war cry of the brave Pochi, the friend of thy guest. The maiden trembled for her brethren. The fame of the fierce Pochi, brother of Jacauna, had spread afar from the seashore to the heights of the Serra. Scarcely was there wigwam which had not panted with a lust of vengeance. In almost all of them, the blow of his unerring tomahawk had laid a warrior low in his camosim. Iracema thought that Pochi came at the head of his braves to deliver his friend. Doubtless it was he who had sounded the seashell at the time when the combat began. It was therefore in a tone of mixed sadness and sweetness that she replied, The stranger is saved. The brethren of Iracema will die, for she will not speak. Cast out this grief from thy soul, Tabajara maid. The stranger, in leaving thy prairies, will not leave in them, like the famished tiger, a trail of blood. Iracema took the hand of the white warrior and kissed it. The stranger's smile, she continued, blunts the remembrance of the harm they wish me. Martin rose and walked to the door. Where goes the white warrior? To seek Pochi. The guest of Araquim may not leave this wigwam, for the warriors of Irapuan will kill him. A warrior owes his life to God and to his weapons only. 
he will not be protected by old men and women. What is one brave against a thousand? The Tamandua is brave and strong, yet the cats of the mountains kill and eat him, because they are so many. The arms of the white warrior only reach as far as the shadow of his body. Those of the Tabajaras fly high and straight as the Anaji. Every warrior has his day. The stranger would not see Rasima die, yet he would make her behold his death. Martin hesitated, perplexed. Irasema will go and meet the Pichiguara chief, and will bring to her guest the words of his warrior friend. The pajé finally awoke from his reverie. The maraca rattled in his right hand. The bells rang in time to his stiff, slow step. He called his daughter apart. If the braves of Irapuã fall upon the wigwam, lift up the stone and hide the stranger in the bosom of the earth. The guest must not be left alone. Wait till Iracema returns. The Inuma has not yet sung. The old man again sat upon his hammock. The maiden went forth after fastening the door of the wigwam. End of chapter 12